Hello and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Now in a recent video we looked at whether it was possible to grow a tree back from a stump and I showed you the results one year later of growing a silver maple back from a stump. Now in today's video I'm going to show you how to create a multi-trunk tree based on that same concept. Here I have a crepe myrtle tree. It already has more than one trunk but the shape is wrong so I want to turn this into this. Now I pruned and decongested several months ago this particular crepe myrtle and as you can see the centre is nice and clear and each individual trunk of this multi-trunk has got room enough to get thicker without banging into or rubbing the one beside it. It's got an uneven amount of stems and it's still got room to develop and above all if I pull back it has got the beautiful vessel shape that this tree should have. And it leaves exposed these beautiful, beautiful, soft, silky smooth bark. Now when I arrived in this garden, the complete left half of the tree was dead. And the right half wasn't exactly hot either. So what I did was salvage the best of the stems on the right hand side and I coppiced the left hand side. And if you remember from the silver maple video, coppicing basically means that you cut down the trunk but you must leave a stump or a stool as it's called. So as soon as you cut down the trunk, and you leave a stump or a stool. The tree automatically sends up a ring or a crown of water sprouts. Water sprouts meaning they stem from the actual trunk itself. So what we're going to do today is virtually divide the tree into two halves, left and right, and the left-hand side we're going to be working with these water sprouts, and the right-hand side we're going to be working with the suckers, which means they come straight from the roots. Suckers from the roots, water sprout from the trunk. But in order to make this multi-trunk tree, we can work with both suckers and water sprouts. So let's get into it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is remove any of them whose shape is not valid. As you can see this one goes up vertically and then it starts reaching out here and it's already bending right out. Now if this continues to growing it'll be growing virtually horizontal so that is absolutely useless for a multi-trunk tree. So I'm going to take this one right down to the base and take it out. So the next thing I want to have a look at is proximity to other trunks. This one is growing vertically, it's got a nice growth habit at the moment, but it is far too close to the existing one. So as this grows and gets wider, it's already going to start interfering with this one. So I'm going to take this one out as well, right down to the base, and out it goes. Get rid of these small suckers as well, and the grass that shouldn't be here. Now, this one I like. At the moment it's a tiny little bit floppy so what I probably want to do is actually give it a little bit of support. But I am going to at this stage, because it's already got a nice woody structure, is remove any of the lower branches. Because what I'm doing basically is preparing this to be a future multi-trunk tree and the trunk is going to need to be clean. I'm leaving leaves up the top because obviously it has to feed itself, it has to carry out photosynthesis. For the moment I'm just cleaning this. I'm going to leave the little tufts on the top and next year or later on in the year I can get back and do some more if necessary. But for the moment that's that. I'm going to have a look at the back of the plant to see if there's any suckers that might inter interest me before we start on the left hand side of the tree. As you can see there are some more suckers here. Now you don't want a trunk that's right behind another trunk because the idea is with a multi-trunk tree that you get this nice wide fan shape or vessel shape. So if it's right behind, it's, we're not interested. So we'll take that one away right down at the base. The same goes for these. However, this one is different because this one is growing with a separation between the trunk and the actual new stem. So I'm going to keep this one. And I'm going to take away the ones that are around us. And of course, any dead stems. And now we get to the water sprouts. So, we already have this one, the last of the suckers which I chose. And now I just need something on this side of the tree. So there's a nice one here, right here in the center. Beautiful vertical one, nice and healthy. And I'm going to choose probably one other one as a plan B and I'm probably going to choose one of the outer ones. So I'm going to choose this one and this one and all of the rest of them have to go. So I'm going to get rid of those now very quickly. Just 
just to be very careful now that I don't cut the actual one I want to keep. So it's that's what I want to keep. So I'm just going to fold down the rest of them so I don't get confused. Huh, and look what I found right in the middle of it. Dreaded. Now again, I said I was going to keep this one and this one. So I want to get rid of this one in the middle that I can get confused with. Take that one down first. Then I'm going to take, put my hand in here and take these ones out. Bend them down again so you don't get confused or nick them. It's so easy with the secretaries to nick them. And if you nick uh, one of these soft stems down at the bottom, well, it doesn't dog go very well for the results. And I'm going to take these ones out as well. Now what I need to do is clean things up. This one, although it's well developed, unfortunately is going to have to go because it falls into the category that I'm too close to my neighbour. And it looks fine at the moment, but it won't be fine in a year's time. So unfortunately this one's going to have to go and I don't want it to re-sprout again. So I'm actually going to have to take this whole branch right down to the base and I need loppers for that. So let's get in with the loppers and see if we can get rid of it. So you can now basically get the gist of it. This one is a set I'm going to support. So it's a bit more like that. This one, because it's older, I have cleaned it out. These ones you would never clean out at this stage. I would never start removing the lower leaves from here. These are very, very young and not that they do now is establish themselves and grow. And then later on in the season, if I see they start to branch out or next year, time enough next year, then I'll start cleaning off the stems and preparing it to become a multi-trunk tree. These two obviously are too close together, but both of them are not going to continue. It's just a plan B. And if I choose this one, eventually this one will get knocked out. And if I choose this one, eventually that one will get knocked out. And another snail. Your goal here is to create an open, decongested, preferably uneven number of stems to form a multi-trunk tree in the future. The next thing you need to decide, obviously, is when you want the actual opening to come. It could be at three feet, it could be at four feet, it could be up to six feet. I chose here around about the five foot mark before I wanted branching out and leafing out into the flowering part of the tree. So, while I'm at it, I don't have to wait now until next February. I can see all of these that are coming below the mark I want. So, while I'm here and while I've got my secretaries in hand, I'm just going to take out all of these little things, these little branches that have sprouted out in the last month, and get rid of them. Again, on your gardening walkabout every morning, don't wait until pruning time to solve an issue like this. You can see this one is growing straight into that one. At the moment, it's not touching, but oh boy, by the end of the season, it will be. So you just get in there with your snips and take them off. A bit difficult with one hand. Same thing, the one above us. And the same thing, these ones are growing again in the wrong direction. So just take them out and take them out. And once again, you've got this air circulation. Further up the tree, the same thing. We do want these ones which are growing out. We don't want these ones that are going towards the other trunk. So for that, out, out, and oh, very definitely out. A lot better. This one, too low. As you can see here, I am leaving things branched below the point of massacre because uh, if you've seen the other videos, all of the crepe myrtles in my garden were massacred. They were all at a cut off point. They've all got these ugly knuckles. So what I'm doing is leaving them leaf out from below and, and hopefully within a couple of years, these new branches will cover these ugly knuckles. So unsightly. Also important to note is there's going to be a difference in bark texture. This is a young stem, so the bark is going to be intact and virtually nondescript really. Whereas the older myrtle is famous for its smooth bark. And it's because the actual bark itself is constantly peeling off. It doesn't mean that the tree is sick. This is normal for this kind of tree. From about this third year onwards, it'll start peeling off little strips that will be constantly falling onto the ground, leaving this gorgeous, smooth type of stem. Absolutely lovely. 
But, of course, between the oldest term and the youngest term, there is going to be a difference until they actually catch up with each other. So in about three years' time, all of these that I've chosen to become multi will all look like this, hopefully in a nice vessel shape, and all of them with this deliciously smooth bark. It is just so silky. I absolutely love it. The best thing is, for the time being, you have time to actually make a mistake, two mistakes, and even three or more mistakes. Because for a certain amount of time, these stumps or stools are going to be sending out little, uh, little water sprouts until eventually it desists. But meantime, if any of these go awry, all you've got to do is wait for the next one to come up and then start training that one. And if that one goes awry, wait for the next one until eventually you get it right. And it'll probably take about several years before that says, just gives up and says, well, I'm not going to send out any more because it's just <laughs> getting tiresome. So that's great news. You have got time on your hands to make mistakes until you actually create your multi-trunk tree. Now you can use this technique to create this type of multi-trunk tree on virtually any type of deciduous tree, except of course for the grafted. Remember, in your head, grafted. Grafted are two different types of trees. From the graft up is one tree, from the graft down is another. And because the suckers come from the roots and not from the actual tree itself, it's going to be a different type of tree. And as regards the water sprouts, depending on if they come from above or below the graft, you're probably looking at the same thing. So graft trees in general, no. However, not only on a myrtle, but on maples and many, many other types of trees, you can create this multi-trunk tree if it's what you prefer. So single or multi-trunk? What to choose? It's totally up to you. It's your garden. You can do what you want with it. For certain types of tree, for instance, for me, for the crepe myrtle, I personally prefer the multi-trunk. But also the standard myrtles are absolutely beautiful too. One very, very important thing. If you buy a young tree, like a little, little nursery pot, and it's very, very young, before either shaping it as a single standard or as a multi, hold off. Do nothing for the first two years. Always keep in your mind the sleep, creep and leap. While it's sleeping and while it's creeping, it's establishing all its beautiful root system. And it needs to establish that root system and it needs to grow to a certain height. Once it reaches the leap stage, then you can think about either cleaning out, leaving a central trunk or creating this multi-trunk. And from then on, A-OK. -okay. Now I'm going to be keeping you updated on the crepe myrtle on its journey from where it is now to hopefully become in a few years time another one of these beautiful open vessel type crepe myrtles. What a glorious tree. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and of course I'm going to see you next week here in Granny's Garden. Bye bye now. What's looking good in the garden today? Dahlia Arabian Night. With the little Coreopsis beside it. What a difference in colour. Love those rich dark hues.